Well, chapter two is a very important chapter uh, to me in so many ways. It's, it's about the idea of self-reliance. Um, and self-reliance is a big history with me personally because there's an essay on, called On Self-Reliance by Ralph Waldo Emerson written in the 19th century. And I read that when I was in high school and I thought that was the greatest thing I ever read. It's, it's probably one of the most influential things I ever read. I, me I memorized the entire thing, which and it's about 20 pages long. And um, the concept is, in, in so many ways in life, uh, we were kind of we're kind of running away from ourselves. We were born as an individual. Uh, every single human being was born in is completely unique creation. Your DNA, your experiences, your brain, the way it's wired, there'll never be another one like you. And we're in, always in life, we're running away from that. And we want other people to help us. We want other books to help us. We want a teacher to show us the way. Um, we want to join a group that will suddenly bring us salvation. We think that if we belong to a church, they will, they will be able to show us the way. And Emerson is saying it's all an illusion. You were born with everything that you need in life. You have resources and powers that you're not even aware of. If you were suddenly put into a, into the, on an island by yourself, you would find all of these resources within you, but in society, it be, it, it, you kind of lose a sense of the power that you have and of this self-reliance. So this is a really, really important theme for me. And in, in the context of, of this chapter uh, that we created, um, I, I think it's more important now than ever because I see uh, Americans becoming a culture of dependence in a way. We, went, we came from a, a culture in the 19th century of people that lived off the land that were incredibly self-reliant, that knew how to get what we wanted for ourselves. It's what made a, our country wealthy and powerful and different from anything else to a culture of dependence. It's people become dependent on a very simple level on technology. They become dependent on, on entertainment for, to, for the slightest. They're bored in any way for something to divert them. They become dependent on, on drugs, and prescription medicine. I mean, the prescription medicine uh, industry in America is, is insane. Uh, how many people are being prescribed these drugs for the slightest thing? We become dependent on everything to help us in life. When we feel sick, the first thing we think of is, is a drug that can help us. If we're depressed, we have this that can help us. And we're not developing things from, from within. We're not developing our own skills and talents. So that, for instance, if you learn early on in life to read a book and to think for yourself, when you felt bored or you felt depressed, you would now have these resources that you could depend on, these thoughts, these ideas, these books, or, or it could even be a person, a guru or a mentor that you could trust. You could turn to this and it's something that, that comes from within you. It's a power you have developed and nobody can take that away from you. I think this is an extremely important issue for nowadays and what really impressed me with um, someone like 50 is he grows up in a world without any parents. I mean, it's an, a hard thing to imagine in life. Um, but put, try for a moment, put yourself in those shoes. He never knew his father. To this day, he doesn't know who his father is. His mother was murdered when he was eight years old. Uh, she was a, a hustler. His grandparents take him in, but they have nine other kids that they're looking after from various different extended families. So he basically has no parental supervision from the age of eight, and even before then he had very little. And so he has to find and discover everything for himself. He can't depend on other people to give him anything. They won't give him money, they won't give him clothing, they won't give him education. And so he on his own, as if that metaphor of being on a desert island is his life. He's on a desert island. He has to develop everything for himself, and he does. And that is what has made him a person of incredible power now. He doesn't feel dependent on anybody or anything. He knows that if anything goes wrong in life, 
he has the resources within himself to find the right answer. And so I think this is an idea that applies to an individual. It applies to a company, to a leader, to a CEO. It applies to relationships. Self-reliance is, to me, the most... If you're going to develop anything in life, that, that has to be it. That's the most important skill. I'm not talking in here that you, that you don't need other people, that you can be completely on your own, that you can go say, you know, F you to everybody and just do things yourself. That's not at all the case. You know, that's to, that's to take things and pull them to their, op, to their extreme. And I have a whole chapter in there about how you must be connected very deeply to other people. But it must come from a position of strength. And what happens is most people come from a position of weakness. They glom on to other people or to groups or to churches or to political organizations because they feel empty inside and they need somebody else to fill them in. But when you feel strong and you feel certain of yourself and you know what makes you different and powerful and interesting and unique, now you're ready to have a relationship with a, a man or a woman or to join a group or to feel connected in a way that's much more powerful than if you come at it from this position of neediness and insecurity and dependence.